Hello everyone, this is Town of Light. I don't know much about it, so we're just going to play. There's a warning here. Psychological content. Horror and disturbing content. View discretion is advised. What's happened? What is this place? Maybe. Maybe I'm dead. I can't see any light. Maybe I am dead. I can't get up. What's going on? What's happening to me? There's no one here. But these noises. God, my head is killing me. I can't keep my eyes open. Reality fades away and my skin is gone. Every breath of wind is excruciatingly painful. Turn off my settings. Stand by. That's better. I know I have a. Yeah, there we go. Do I have a sprint? As previously stated, and I have the warnings, this does have disturbing content. Your discretion is advised. This reminds me of Slender, uh, which, which is the good one. Oh I can just pick up and look at everything? I can ride the seesaw? Can I use the swing? Oh, I can 
go down the slide. We. I can't crouch. Is this a puzzle? Where the fuck am I supposed to go? Competent people, that's super rare. We are too far, we should go back. Okay, but where? I can't open the fridge. That's bullshit. I don't... What the fuck am I supposed to do? Yeah, this beginning area is pretty fucking frustrating. <laughs> I I can't get through here. Yeah, 
I, oh, you don't say. You have to go somewhere. That's even fun with the fucking say. I thought I was just gonna hang out at the greenhouse and the playground the entire game. Wait. Wait, no. Is it a puzzle or am I just missing something? Also, should probably note it for the future uh, future YouTube video. I'm currently co-streaming with Fighter's Heart. <laughs> yeah, that's fine though. I'm I've been walking around the last 15 minutes, so. Oh, what the fuck? That gate opens? That looks so misleading. <sighs> I walked up to it like eight times. The whole game's gonna be like this. I'm gonna get stuck constantly. But I have to go this way. Cellar. The secret place under the asylum. Well, I haven't gone into the asylum yet, but I can't tell you these people don't know how to treat people. You have your medical license taken. Well, I guess it's already shut down, so it's probably already happened. I don't suppose I can walk through the front door? Oh, I can. I'm gonna go ahead and give the disclaimer again. This is probably gonna have disturbing content. So if you're still watching at this point, I'm not held liable for anything. Uh, my lawyers call your lawyers. I think you got my gender wrong. I feel assaulted. C came for me. Yeah, we need kings. What is this? Oh! 
I got something. One out of eight? Wait a minute. Last time I had to collect eight nodes. The only thing I remember clearly is Charlotte, my doll. Yeah, you guys hear that? My, my laptop's being in achievements. There you go, I fixed it. Hopefully. No, no, she's freezing. She's alone. Let's look for her. Let's look for who? Your doll? Abandon her. Oh, okay. Okay, we'll go look for your doll. What are you, crazy frog? I should also say I've got Kai, Busby, and CC all in the party. So a lot of things I'm going to say in the future aren't going to make sense. Oh, I have it unincluded, so fuck you. Wow. If you're not prepared for the sacrifices of being a parent, you shouldn't be a parent. Just saying. Is it copyrighted? Um, I guess you're not monetized. Oh boy, did I do it? I didn't do it. Nobody says we can't. Let's find Charlotte. I have to actually just... Kai is much more of a Pomeranian, not a lion. I'm listening. You ain't kings. You ain't got the clap back. Oh, shit! Let's search the wards on the upper floor. There's a plan on the wall which shows their location. Okay, we can do that. I'm so glad she was smart enough to bring a flashlight. I was thinking the same thing, see? I can't read Italian. Why did my game just load? If you guys are going to want to read a lot of the notes, you might want to pause because I'm not going to read them. Just uh, another disclaimer out there. Also, one more time. I'm pretty sure this game's going to have a lot of disturbing content. So just 
Fucking disclaimer. I can already sense it. Yeah, I can feel it already. It's Let's find room. Charlotte. She's alone. She's alone in the dark. Renee doesn't want to abandon her. <laughs> what is this? Why is this one area lit? I just can I just it looks like a robot. It looks like Roberto. Roberto from Futurama, the stabby robot. <laughs> if I had an editor, I would ask him to put up a picture of him. Oh, the doll! Mummy took good care of Charlotte. She tucked her in, hugged her, gave her cuddles and kisses. She was very affectionate and loving. Nothing bad happened to Charlotte, and that surprised me. I didn't understand. At first, I was quite scared. I was afraid that she wanted to hurt me. I lived in constant fear that Mom would abandon her. Because I didn't deserve to live. I didn't deserve to be loved. It's cold and it's dark. Look, she's cold. She'll get ill. We can take care of her. Nobody can stop us. Charlotte is a good girl. Well... Everyone deserves to live and be loved. Almost everyone. There are very few exceptions. It's like 3 p.m. Charlotte is cold. Let's take her somewhere warm. Okay. Where's warm, buddy? Is it here? Those lamps could make the room warmer. But Charlotte's not happy. She doesn't feel well. Okay. Is this not what I'm supposed to do? I just take her outside? That's what I'm supposed to do. Sure, it's warm in the sun, but it gets cold in the evening, and that's not good for Charlotte. Okay, where do you want to put Charlotte? Why don't you just say so? Because I don't fucking know where to put a doll to keep it warm. The microwave? He'll get angry. I know he'll get angry. Who's he? That's concerning. Is there a monster here I don't know about? He doesn't want to. No. In the town of light, he doesn't want to. Charlotte is cold. 
Let's take her somewhere warm. Goes up and down one floor. Okay. I saw a wheelchair on the ground floor. It's comfortable there, and we can put Charlotte somewhere warm. A wheelchair? Okay. Charlotte will be comfy here. But it's cold. No, no, it's cold. Don't shiver, Charlotte. The cold will go away. It'll go away. That doll has some human-looking eyes. has gone away now. You see? The light. The warmth. We can do it. The cold will go away. It has to. Now we can enter the ward where everything started. Okay, it so all began in the observation see, oh. ward on the ground floor. Okay. Okay. Try to use an elevator, but the door isn't closed. Why is that so ominous? No, that's a hole in the ground. I don't want to go there. I'm pretty sure that's death. I don't want to go in there. Am I supposed to? Do I have to? Yeet. Oh. Oh, okay. I just... Is another one of those? Can I just...
Am I shrinking? This reminds me of SCP Containment Breach in uh, 106 Larry's Dimension. It's fucking weird. The zombies, holy shit. I was terrified of everything, even thinking. They said they were taking me to a place where the fear would go away, where I would get better. I stopped living in there. They dragged me away and stripped off all my clothes, everything. I tried to explain what was going on in my head. They tied me to the bed for days. I was alone with my nightmares. It wasn't fear anymore. It was madness. And when you're mad, you cease to exist. Can I get up and move? Can you put some clothes on? She you? was my only hope in this hell. I was descending down, down among the damned. But that woman and her smile kept me alive. The door is locked from the outside. Here, the doors can only be locked and unlocked from the outside. You can't get out of here. Only the dead can leave this place. I'm dead on the inside, does that count? Joe, enjoy your lurk. Hello? Charlotte, is that you? Put some fucking clothes on.
Oh, I can move. Put some clothes on. You have my doll. Can I have that? Flip the switch and nothing happens. It's black and white. Oh boy, a bath. He laughed, panted, and slobbered all over me. It hurt me when he touched me. I thought I'd suddenly split open with a loud cry. Uh, viewer discretion. And I would be shattered into pieces. I felt fragile, sick, dirty, degraded. All I could do was clutch Charlotte tightly while he... Renee obeyed. He was the master in the realm of light. I was being consumed by the evil act I had committed. I threw up and could feel hell getting closer and closer. Those tests the doctors did to me. They said there was something growing inside and they wanted to drag it out of me. I got another one of the diaries. She stayed with Renee during those terrible medical examinations, and that gave her the strength to survive.
fuck's that sound? Well, I can just leave. They went to the gynecology ward on the upper floor. Oh, okay. One more time, disturbing content. August 21st, 1938, confidential. Dear A, I know what you think about these things, so I'm referring a patient to you, Renee T. This wretched girl got out of control and caused trouble in the grounds. She's almost three months pregnant. The nurses should be more alert. I'm examining the girl on the 28th. I'll handle things very carefully, don't worry. We don't want to make matters worse. Then they said that Renee was crazy, and that the illness was all in her head. Careful, little girl, careful. I was scared, and I didn't talk to anyone about the illness. Only her. Not even the other doctor. He never touched Renee. He just wrote things down. You can tell me everything. Don't be afraid, he said. Everything is going to be fine. Do you want to know what I am writing? I note down what I observe in you, everything I see. He didn't hate Renee. He tried to help her, but he rarely examined her in those small surgeries. The doctor who wrote things down was in Surgery C. Maybe it's this way. Okay. March 12, 1938. Renee T., 16 years old. Menstruation at age 12. Housewife. Father unknown. Mother a seamstress. Admitted an observation yesterday morning from Pontedera, accompanied by a police officer authorized by the examining magistrate of the Court of Pisa, to be admitted for a psychiatric evaluation, which I have carried out. Medical certificate. Mental illness preceded by warning signs. Has suffered from depression for a year, believing she had tuberculosis. Food deprivation. We can't read this document. It is forbidden. We mustn't. If they find out, there will be trouble.
We have to look for Amara. We must hurry. We have to follow the memories and make sure they don't fade. She is frightened, hears noises and ghosts, presents serious signs of anxiety psychosis, suffers from hallucinations. She is anxious, confused, her expression is distressed, a questioning look as if terrified, disoriented. She feels confused, hears voices shouting in her head. She doesn't understand things properly. She has been feeling unwell for two or three months. When questioned, she replies, My mother wants to hurt me. I am always scared of her. She chases me. Why are you here? I argued with my mother and was so upset that I felt like my head was spinning. There was a woman there who wanted to force me into a life of prostitution. They wanted to condemn me to be burned at the stake. Children whispered, called my name. March 16th. She couldn't sleep last night. They wanted to condemn her to be burned at the stake. April 4th. Transferred to the calm ward still under my supervision. Yes, that's true. The ward where Amara was. Yes, the stake. The children wanted to burn Renee. She had to pay for what she'd done, like witches at the stake. April 21st. She's more awake this morning and is responding to questions, complains of headaches. She became agitated when she found out her mother was there. She says that one day, many years earlier, she was with a friend of hers and met a man who made her get into a car and took her for a ride. He made her smoke cigarettes and drink liquor, and the man showed her certain things. He tried to hurt her and made her go crazy. She says he promised to marry her and made her swear to keep what had happened a secret. These facts were essentially confirmed by her mother. After that, she became arrogant and patient and hostile towards her family, especially her mother. She started taking off her clothes in public. Her moods would swing from laughter to tears. She rants. She pleasures herself. I can't remember these things. Only the guilt, the stake. I know I deserve to pay for that guilt. I knew it even then. She was uncooperative during the examination. She didn't want to be stripped and her body remained rigid. Voluntary attention almost totally absent. Probable hallucinations. April 25th. Confused ideas. Unable to maintain a spontaneous conversation. Reflex is all normal. Reactive pupils. Let's find Amara and we'll find the full medical records. My game volume's up pretty high, I didn't hear much, Kai. I put it in chat, but I realized you're not in there. The grounds at the back of the hospital, and then down to the kitchens. I couldn't ping you. I think Naz told me about that. How do you activate it? How do you activate it? That's actually awesome. This is the road we used to take. If it weren't for her, in the grounds on that bench in spring, so many days. It was an escape, watching nature around us as she talked and smiled. And then there were the kitchens. Sometimes we stole food and ran back to the bench to eat it in secret 
and we laughed. She did things to me. Sometimes she touched me. In the shower, I felt her body against mine for the first time. It was a shiver that warmed my soul. Eyes closed. The light slipped away. Let's look for Amara in the kitchen. She wasn't in, in the, the basement system. of the building. He would Behind let her in. That's it. She must be the key. The key to my memories. To the reasons why. Nature helped me to forget. To escape from the system. This lady's had a rough life. Are these rock bitches? I'm liking this so far. This seems like a pretty good game. It has some tough content though, but I'm enjoying it. Graphics are alright. You can tell it's ported over. Not really in a bad way though. In my opinion, they should be rendered down a little bit in favor of performance, but whatever works, works. <laughs> It wasn't Renee, was it? Was it? I got an achievement for discovering the greenhouse, which is here, but I don't know why I'm here. Oh, this way. Come on. Come on, let's look everywhere. She must be here, I'm certain. The door's shut on its own. I've seen that. These are some relatively new looking pallets. These are really clean for pallets. <laughs> I just. I worked in retail a lot and just. Those are clean fucking pallets. Like. No, those things are Keep like. Looking. Very we good condition. Up. They must have been new off the truck like the day before. You know how many splinters I've gotten from looking for pallets? Like, way too many to count. Look for Amara in the kitchen. That's I'm pretty sure where we are. She's not here. I checked everything. Where could she be? We've got to talk to her. Everything will be alright. But being here now, I don't like it. Come on, let's look for her quickly. We can't stay in here too long. They'll find us. When they found us. Come on, hurry. We've got to find her quickly. We've got to get out of here. They'll find us. But not now. Who's they? Not yet. Amara's not here. Maybe she's in the showers. We can find her there. The water was often cold. When it was cold, we ran away. But when it was hot, 
Then she came to Rene, under that cruel white light. I can still feel the shivers her body gave me. Everything must return to how it was. If we recreate that magic, she'll come to us. What? We have to turn the water on in the showers and switch the boiler on. All the plumbing systems were in the kitchen area. That's here. Okay, I gotta... This is for the laundry machine? I don't know what this is. Plug in cords? water on in the showers and switch the boiler on. All the plumbing systems were in the kitchen area. How many accents do you practice? <laughs> that is an easy word, huh? There was one thing that was an issue. To me personally. I am not going to say it. Yeah, that one. That's a really bad one. But the rest of it, you know, is more of opinion based. Randy, thanks for the host. If you guys haven't done so, consider following the Fighter's Hearts for mediocre at best siege content. <laughs> I can feel the salt. <laughs> I can feel the salt. <laughs> Nah, she carried us the gold. Well, silver won technically, even though I got the achievement for gold, so. Don't know how that works. Oh, I can open these? I don't know what I expect to find, but. So I gotta go to the showers, but. I'm not sure how to get there. I have to go like all the way back through and around and shit. These are locked, so I don't know how that's gonna work. Nope. Oh, I can't even go that. What the fuck? Uh, the first one was my personal issue, because that's a confirmed no-no. 
The second one is more personal based. I don't feel like that's in and of itself bad to say, but it definitely crosses some people's lines. I don't, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say anything more on that. I can't figure out how to get the fuck out of this area. Leonic, thanks for the host. You're a legend. Yeah, I'm aware. <laughs> there's a reason. <laughs> That's not the reason. But there's a reason. Where the fuck are the showers? What's up? We're playing Town of Light, which is disturbing content once again. Just going to throw that out there. And we're going to shout out Leonic while we're at it. He hasn't streamed for a while and he's currently on hiatus, but uh, Dead by Daylight content. You play other stuff too, right? Like Modern Warfare. Yep, there it is. You'll get back to it someday, I'm sure. How the fuck do I get to the showers? I am liking this game, even with the disturbing content. However, it, Kai, are you okay? That's like the third sneeze. Apex COD, DVD, and ARC. Hell yeah. Play what you love, man. But I don't like games like this when I just get stuck. Because the way to continue is like super vague. That bothers me. What? What the fuck was that? I keep getting framework drops. Ready. We can go to oh. the bathrooms. We can go along that narrow corridor in the kitchens. We'll meet her in the showers, yes. I did start turning knobs. It just was unclear because there was another puzzle downstairs. That I already solved, so I just... I don't know. I don't care. I did it. I just don't like getting stuck like that when things are super vague and unclear. When in doubt, hit the red button. I agree. Let's get to the valve. Where are the showers again? Once again, I'm going to keep saying it. This game is full of disturbing and sexual content. That's not what you want to watch? Avert your eyes. That's not the point. I like to give a verbal disclaimer. Like I have my starting student screen is now just a really big disclaimer. Now everything is ready. We can go to the bathroom. Oh, it's just the bathrooms? We can go along that narrow corridor in the kitchens. We'll meet her in the showers, Hi, yes. This way to the left. I really don't like that term, Leonic, because people use it Not in for this differing. Ward. Not in use. observation, remember? Let's go to the calm ward. To the calm ward? Okay. Yeah, that word bothers me as well as fascist. Like, people use them out of context to express negative viewpoints, and it just kind of bothers me because that's just not how the words work. We have to go to the calm ward. Trinko ward, so that's number seven. So the left. It's not against you personally. It's not against anyone personally. It's just in general, that's just my viewpoints. I'm not saying you can't say it, just use it in the right context. The word in and of itself isn't an issue. People like to use different words for things that they don't understand, specifically insults. And then they just look dumb, because <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Everything's ready. Let's get undressed and leave our clothes on the hooks in the changing rooms. Um, this is weird.
I don't think taking a shower in an abandoned asylum is a good idea, but apparently that's what we're doing. Let's turn the water on now, and everything will be as before. I don't think that's how that works, but alright, we'll do it your way. Why is, why is everything so wavy? Turn the water on, right, with what switch, what valve, what button, there's no, how do I? Is it over there? What the fuck? Oh. Oh. Did I get that one? I gotta go get my own. I would say put some clothes on like I've been yelling this entire game, but it is the shower room. It at least makes sense. Why am I on the ground? I don't know why I'm so low. Amara was everything I could have been, but she no longer existed. I'd have loved to erase Joe, thanks for your lurk. Did, but instead I always went ahead and did it again. It was my fault, and she disappeared from my life. They gave you injections there, which made your body and soul tremble violently. A whirlwind of anguish and unbearable pain. I lived in terror of the next time. They had taken me upstairs to that ward where no one wanted to go. Let's look for Renee's room Poutine? in a slightly agitated ward. Poutine is amazing. Poutine is superior to rice. Slightly agitated ward. So, from what I'm gathering, is I read a lot of the notes and the side stuff. Kai, I got an echo off you. I mean, it's rainy. I mean, it's rainy. Um, these people viewed homosexuality as a sin, I guess, and they're seen as something to be corrected. Why the hell does the agitator ward though? This was a this was a mental hospital.
And this lady was a patient. When there was too much and chaos, they the closed all down. the windows and the door. They turned off the lights, and it was pitch black. Some people fell asleep. Some others stopped seeing their demons and became more calm. I think they've seen homosexuality that's something to be corrected in general, like as a people. Like this also took place in what, 1938, I think. And the uh the hospital took it into their own hands, I guess. I don't know, the story's still fleshing out. That's dry blood. This is an ex-patient. Her name's Renee. Oh, you just kind of jumped in, you know. It's fair to ask questions. Yeah, I don't know that much more, honestly. <laughs> This place has been shut down for years, easy. There's a bike in the bathtub, I know, right? Wait, how? Search for the room, but all the doors are locked. That's really cool, but disturbing. Can't do anything with that. I also wish I could sprint, but that's just <laughs> that's a speedrunner in me. This is where I'm supposed to be. Also, the ambiance is like A plus. If I wasn't in the party with some people, I would definitely feel I don't... Where am I supposed to go? Like, the game, I think, is purposely trying to make you feel like you're in the middle of nowhere, alone, in this abandoned asylum. And, you know, talking to you guys. What, what the, what, 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 what? I mean, I guess. It doesn't bother me either way, but... I've been trying to be a little more immersive with my horror gameplay. But it's an exception, because I was already hanging out with everybody, but you know, normally I would be playing this in the dark alone. Ooh, spooky ghost. I can't... I can't what the fuck? Where am I supposed to go? Find the room, but all the doors are locked. Yeah, fuck you. Open oh, my windows, though. Cool. A plus. Wait. Wait. I thought I was clever. I thought I like had to go outside and walk around and shit. I guess not. I just no. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to go. Yay, fresh air indeed. Wait, is this a puzzle or am I just dumb?
Where the hell am I supposed to go? I'll make it look up a guide. Look for Renee's room, but all the doors are locked. Is this Game Pass? No, I paid for this. I caught it for a really good deal. No, I, I really want a new horror game. What a comfortable chair for us to sit on. I think it was like a game for gold or something at one point. That's what Meg said. I don't actually know. I just... I really don't know where I'm supposed to go. <laughs> I wish I had a sprint though. annoying to just kind of slowly meander around, specifically when I'm stuck, but in general. Am I, like, not supposed to be here or something? Look, I was trying to point at the screen like you guys can see it. <laughs> in the top left there, that room that's really far off, that's like... the That's the bathroom that we keep seeing. And there's that little board in the bathroom. Apparently that leads to this other room, which I would assume is the room we have to get to because it's the middle one. And the other entrances are through the sealed doors, which obviously we can't get to. But I don't see... I don't see how I'm supposed to be able to get into there. Because that those boards are discolored, so I thought maybe I have to break them or something, but I don't have any tools or anything. Unless I have to go find the tool to break it. That kind of makes sense, I guess. Sink? What about the sink? Sink don't do shit. I'll give another couple minutes. I'm probably gonna have to look up a walkthrough on this. I have no idea what to do. <laughs> Magical Harry Potter now, like the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> I have no idea how to, to get in there. These doors open, there's nothing I can really do. I'll go try to put that thing in the wall in the examination room again, I guess. Like Spookular Scoop, zoinks! <laughs> Gosh! <laughs> Once again, I'm, just, I'm kinda getting stuck. I... When games make things too vague, 
it starts to kind of ruin the fun for me. Like, yes, I'm stuck, and maybe that's to my own stupidity, but there's no clue, no, no way to know, no sign that the hint isn't really helping. It's just saying look for the room again and again. I've checked everything. It just starts to get frustrating. So I guess I'll just walk off somewhere else. Let's go this way. Zoom, motherfuckers. Oh, keys. Oh, I can't. No. <laughs> Can't pick up the keys, but we can look at the mouth book. Alright, fucking fantastic. June 1935. After much theorizing and practice in clinics for the privileged, the moment for action has finally arrived. Volterra is the right place. It's an avant-garde hospital. The perfect place for a doctor who really wants to make a difference. November 20th. Crossing the threshold of the asylum was similar to entering another dimension. A world of smells, noises, and images, which it is almost impossible to imagine, describe, or explain. August 1936. The situation is similar to that in many other institutions. The department is overcrowded. Hundreds of patients are supervised by a handful of nurses who are forced to tie the more distressed ones to their beds or to radiators. They do 24-hour shifts. It's impossible to work like this. We doctors rarely see the female patients, and it's the nurses who tell us what's happening to the women. Well, that's just... Not good. You gotta run your fucking shit. You wanna help people, but you're just making it worse. Oh, I found that, so that's cool. It's gonna disturb me, but very cool art. Those wooden plates were like the other ones. One thing I can't touch the keys. I know, right? I was like, oh, the keys. That makes sense. I can unlock. Nope. I just, I, I have no direction, like, oh, go to this other place. Charlotte, do you know where to go? Like, I feel like there might be a window, or a door ajar, or something, something niche I just haven't seen yet. It's like another lab, but I can't find anything this time. I'm gonna take a break and probably cheat. I mean, I'm not gonna cheat. I never cheat.
It's just, it's not fun to do this. I know some games pride themselves on making the solutions hard to figure out, but it just takes a lot out of the game when you're trying to tell a story, because this will make just a lot of people not give a shit. They will just <laughs> leave the game and never come back, you know? That's just how it is. You can make puzzles, but give them a fair chance to figure it out. I've been all over this fucking top floor. I can't imagine anything would be downstairs because that makes literally zero sense. Alright, let's check in here one more time, I guess. Right, I'm gonna pause, take a quick break. Uh, I'll be back.
Okay, I'm back. I figured it out. I totally didn't cheat, but I just, you know, had an epiphany. I just kind of thought, you know, let's just make everything dark. That's what Renee said when she walked in. That just makes sense, right? Right? Oh, spooky. Let's go this way. I'm sure nothing bad will happen when I close all the blinds. Nothing bad's gonna happen. I'm just making the room super dark. It'll be fine, Kai. You just gotta believe. Why do you say it like that? Because it's CC. You're right. Put on a blanket. I think this is helping, but... Is that not it? Did I not do everything? Did I not... Did I not do it? Oh. Oh no, this is the right room. Oh, there we go. I figured it out. It's that room. Holy shit! They tied you to the bed. They tied me to the bed. A woman died next to me, choked by her own vomit. She was tied down because she wouldn't stop pleasuring herself. I can still hear her death rattle. I screamed, but nobody came. Everybody screamed in there, all of them. It was then I saw the doll, which wasn't Charlotte. No, she wasn't Charlotte. Welcome the to Jurassic came Park. Back to hurt me again, in the loneliness of that crowded ward. He brought it with him. I thought I would never see him again. 
he'd come to remind me who I was. That's what my mother used to do. That's what I had done. It seems that my life in here was just a repeat of what it had been outside. The doll. The fear. The shame. I'd have loved to erase everything I did, but instead I always went ahead and did it again. Montefascoli, oh. November 12th, 1939. My dear daughter, it is with great sadness that I heard what happened. Your transfer and your sufferings are a cause of great worry for me. It will take time, but you'll see. Things will improve. They'll treat you and you'll get better again. I pray a lot, every day. Write to me often, and tell me if you need anything. I promise I'll do what I can. Try to be strong. Mom. This is the last letter she wrote to me. Once I was put into this ward, I was overwhelmed by loneliness. After that medical examination, I received no more letters from Mom. Why is that man here? Why doesn't she come to see me? Did I make a mistake? It didn't seem like she wanted to abandon me. What did I do wrong? I'd like to be able to reply to her again now, to change things. I can appreciate the joke, but while I'm playing this... Perhaps she would have listened to me. Will she reply? Now I have a letter. Okay. I also forgot a note in here. Montefoscoli, December 20th, 1941. Dear Director, could you please let me know how my daughter, your patient, Renee T., is getting along? I've written to my daughter several times, but have received no reply. I'm very worried, particularly as I've been ill for some time and have not been well enough to come and visit her. Please kindly let me know when it will be possible for me to bring my daughter home. Your humble servant, Ada T. Bring this letter to the attention of Dr. C so he can assess the potential discharge of the patient. So the last letter the mom sent to Renee was not delivered to the doctor, even though she asked if the doctor would consider releasing her because she was dying, or at least sick. They didn't actually say she died, but I'm assuming she's dead. I think that's fair. That's, that's pretty fucked up. What's really shitty is these people, I don't think they even tried to treat her. Like they didn't, from everything I'm fucking seeing, they didn't even give any effort. It's like, no, fuck you.
It's a good guide on how to not be a professional. The letters were sent to the archive. It was their job to post them. Bruna M. Police officer. Bruna M. On Onofrio P. The, on the forty. June thirteen ninety four. They banned visits to her. What the fuck? I thought I heard a noise, but it was it was IRL not in the game. There's a honk outside. There must be a really big goose out there. Oh, I did that. Okay. I don't know what happens when I collect all those. I haven't even looked at that yet. That's morbid. Okay. Okay. Later, guys. Copy, copy. See ya. Assuming it was downstairs. So can you close the door? Thank you. <laughs> These times are gonna come down or go up and see someone standing on the other side. Mark my fucking word. Wait, what? Yeah. She said archives. Where the fuck are the archives? Yeah, archives. Or the archive. Singular, I guess. I'm pretty sure it's not up here. But it's not down here either. It's not on the map. Thank you. I don't where the fuck the archive is supposed to be, but okay. so but oh this is kitchen yeah
the beds the other way. Yeah, if I had to guess, then it's gonna send you opposite ends every time. So it makes sense to go over here, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So to the archive, yes, I know. I don't know where the archive is. Possibly the ref refectory? What the hell is that word? Refectory? I don't know what that means, but it's the only thing that <laughs> might be the archive. That is really cool. Some sort of bird possum? I heard something, but okay, I'll just pretend I didn't. The showers, right? Yes, yeah, the showers. Besides getting stuck, I am really enjoying this game. This is like a real list of people that help fund the game. That's horrible. Where the fuck are the archives? I wonder if it might be like outside somewhere?
Well, we could sit on them, but what's the point, you know? What the fuck was that? That was like some electrical screaming. Paige, thanks for the host. You're the best. If you guys haven't done so, consider following the Just page. Oh, I'll touch you out in a minute. I just explore. This way. The scent of spring. The land of light was far away, and we spent the days chatting on the stone benches. Huh. I figured out how to get to the catwalk, so that's cool. Sure what the point of coming out here is, but it's cool that you can. Got an achievement. I walked on the plank. <laughs> That's funny. Whoa, that rendering. I don't know what those little people symbol are in the bottom. I don't know what those are or what they do. Um There were definitely really big tanks here. I'm assuming they were like boilers or something. Except for the hot water, I remember that. Kind of a weird glitch, but alright. I feel like I've been around the entire place again. I'm gonna take one more look upstairs. If I can't figure it out, I might have to cheat again. I mean, I don't cheat, I never cheat. I do like how you can literally walk around the entire building if you want, though. It's really cool that this is kind of like an open area. I just heard the flick noise, like the light switch flick noise. What the fuck is going on?
I'm going to check down here. And I'm going to go upstairs. Well, this definitely isn't it. I think one of the issues is this game was made originally, I think, in Italian, and some stuff was kind of lost or misconstrued in translation. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but it just, you know, it happens with foreign games. There's not always something you can do about it. Some words don't literally translate. Sometimes it gets oversimplified, it, it's just something that happens. I just heard like the wind blowing in my ear, creepily. Rome, yeah, okay, it's Rome. Wait, she's dead? Amara died on November 8, 1942. Maybe Renee doesn't know she's dead. Oh. I don't think anything's out there. Oh, it's the archives. I really doubt there's anything collectible out there, though. Alright, let's go upstairs and check that one last area, I suppose. I guess we're just gonna do it. It's kind of unsettling, but this game gives a really good feel to how it's similar to how it actually feels to walk around in an empty, abandoned place alone. Like it, it's not scary, but it's unsettling, and you're kind of on edge. Which you can tell us exactly they're going for, and they hit the nail on the fucking head. That's it's just good. Oh.
called Synopsy, I guess. I found all of Renee's diary entries. That's cool. Oresto Bacchio. I got an achievement for you found him, which is this. I found this guy. Four, five, six. Fucking Torchwood reference. Okay. I can only imagine this is where the archives would be. It's like the very last place I haven't checked. Here's something in here. Okay. how it looked uh, at one point in the past. When you were sent to a lunatic <laughs> asylum, you lost the right to possess anything. Everything you arrived with was packed up and stored here, even the clothes you were wearing. In case you were released one day, but far too many never left. It's always the very last place you check, right? I'm going to check the map when we're out of here and just see what this room was labeled. What? You can't open these? Be these ones, though. Dear Mother, please, I beg you, get me out of this place. I'm so frightened here. You were right. I know I was wrong. I understand. I'm so ashamed. If only you knew how much. But now I'll behave myself, I promise. Now things will be fine. I'll work hard. I'll be very good. Your daughter, Renee. They never sent it. This letter. It's so fucked up. It was Renee's letter. Just as she wrote it back then. But it was never sent. Why? Why did this happen? I received your letter, Mom. You tell me to be patient and strong. While I only feel fear. And pain. And you don't write to me anymore. If only these words could be my soul, I'd tell you what was happening to me. The kids want to kill me. They all look the other way and tell me what to do. I don't understand. She helps me, but what have they done to her? Can you tell me? Will you help me? Renee. Once again, they didn't send that. Montefoscoli, July 7th, 1940. My dear daughter, I have received no news from you. You have not contacted me in months. I'm sorry, but I don't have the money to come and visit you. Do you remember Mr. Onofrio? He'll soon be in Volterra for business. I've asked him if he would be kind enough to ask the director for some news about you. They didn't... I hope he'll oh, bring me some good news when he returns. But please write to me. I know that I was strict with you. You have to forgive me. 
I didn't think. I've given Mr. Onofrio a new doll for you. You told me that you lost yours, and I know you loved it so much. It's not as nice as your Charlotte, but I hope that it will comfort you nonetheless. Keep your chin up, darling. Everything will be fine, you'll see. Mom. More? They didn't send any of them between the two. October 12th, 1940. My dear daughter, I've written two letters to you and have received no reply. Every day, I'm anxiously waiting for a letter. Mr. Onofrio's back. He brought you the doll. Do you like it? He told me he was unable to speak to the director, but managed to see you. I pray for you every day. Even Don Gino said a prayer for you during Sunday Mass. Isn't that nice? I've made up my mind, Rene. I'm bringing you home. I've already written to the director. I told him that I'll take care of you. I'm not very well at the moment and can't work, but I'll get better soon, you'll see. And as soon as I can make the journey, I'll come and fetch you. I know you're suffering a lot, but please be strong, I beg you. Mom will come and fetch us, won't she? Mom is good, but she's not well. That's why that man came. She also sent us the doll. I could have played with it and talked to it while waiting for her to come, but Renee didn't bring it with her. Perhaps she's been abducted like all the others and is locked up here somewhere. That's just ridiculous. They didn't give Renee any of the letters from her mom? Or send out any of the letters from Renee to her mom. And that's just that's just ridiculous. That's it's inherently ridiculous. It's fucking ludicrous. That shouldn't happen. Let's look for the second doll. It'll be among the bundles of the patient's belongings. Okay. Find this. I can. I can move it. That works too. Oh, I can only move it. I can't climb it. No point opening those though. Not I can't climb the ladder though. Wait, that's like open the packages or something, or oh, oh, I don't, I don't know what that was, but okay. Okay. That now was... we can open the bundle on that table in front of the window. May the Lord guide your path and keep you from sin, Mom. You see? Mom was good. I was bad. 
Mom was worried about Renee and Charlotte. I abandoned Charlotte. We've abandoned her. I didn't. I'm gonna go get Charlotte now. I assume that's what we're doing. We're gonna go get Charlotte. Let's look for Charlotte. We have abandoned her. Will she still be where we abandoned her? Under the warm lights? I didn't, I didn't do, do anything. anything. I just obeyed I orders. I only obeyed orders. Charlotte's sure gone away. Mom I will didn't come and get me. She loves us. I only you obeyed, obeyed orders. Leave us alone. Charlotte's gone away. I didn't do anything. I only obeyed orders. Mom will come and get us. I didn't do anything. I only obeyed orders. Even though we're bad. Mom won't leave us alone. I didn't do anything. Charlotte gone away. I only obeyed orders. Mom will come and get us now. She loves us, even though we're bad. I didn't do anything. I only obeyed orders. Can't do anything. Oh. Shock therapy.
that bear be? September 7th, 1938. The patient frequently indulges in recriminations expressed in an explosive tone of voice. This morning she threw away the milk, saying it was full of urine, spittle, and all kinds of other filth. Crazed, she hears voices that order her to do things. She says she heard children singing and that they were locked up in a school. January 20th, 1939. Introverted. Dazed, cannot focus on anything. When questioned and stimulated, she starts crying and weeping. At other times, she laughs. June 1st, apathetic, eats very little. She refuses to be touched, does not respond. Spends her time in the grounds. The cooks report that she sits on a bench in front of the kitchens. October 14th, return of impulsive behavior. This morning, she asked for two eggs to make tzabayoni. But when she got them, she threw them up in the air. Excited, clamorous, slightly confused, takes her clothes off. December 8th, tied to bed for 15 days. High-spirited, tends to make witty comments and use vulgar words. Laughs hysterically and pleasures herself. The nurses report that about two weeks ago, she remained in the showers on her own and didn't want to leave. They said that when they took her away, she swore at them and then lashed out and bit them. Two nurses had to be treated for their injuries. They've kept her tied to the bed since then, transferred to the slightly agitated ward from the care of Dr. B to the care of Dr. C. I was with Amara in the showers. My memories are terrifying. They're not real, are they? December 15th, Dr. C. Patient notes, the abnormality of her psychic state has induced her to lead a life which is irregular and tends towards delinquency. Of fickle and flighty character, she regularly discards her household duties and engages in occasional prostitution. Delinquency? Maybe I answered someone back rudely, yes, and people get on my nerves at times, but delinquency? And prostitution? No, why? Why say a thing like that? The old doctor tried to understand, but this one just labels you without thinking, or even trying to comprehend. Her mental deficiency makes her deaf to the reprimands of her family. She has shown suicidal tendencies. She was brought to the ward yesterday, agitated and hysterical. Treated with cardiazole, two injections a week for five weeks. They were only trying to confuse us with the therapy, and my god, they succeeded. It was as if they wanted to instill the madness into us. Therapies removed the light for a while, but also all her will, desire, and hope. June 2nd. After a long period of calm and improvement, the patient is very agitated today and vehemently refuses to submit to a gynecological examination. She swears and curses those helping her, flailing her arms and hitting them. According to reports by Dr. B, the patient has been subjected to periodic checkups since she had a spontaneous abortion about two years ago in her third month of pregnancy. Conception occurred after she had sexual intercourse with a stranger who sneaked into the hospital grounds. 
details are contained in the charges filed at police headquarters in Volterra, a copy of which is attached to these clinical notes. ES Therapy That's how the reality is concealed. It has all been planned very carefully. June 13th. The nurses report that she descended into a state of great mental confusion after receiving her mother's letter. She threw her soup over another inmate because she was very anxious and then punched a nurse. Impulsive flails about her. She rails against the doctor in vulgar terms while he is examining her, lashes out and spits. Block all correspondence to give the patient no further reason to become agitated. August 20th, tied to bed. The nurses report that the patient is extremely agitated after the visit of a relative or family friend. Two days later, she is still shouting all the time that he commands her, that she must obey and harm herself, and that she is not Charlotte. All visits forbidden, constrained to bed, and intensification of ES therapy until we achieve results. No contact with the outside. That way, nobody knew what was happening within these walls. Calm down. You must be calm. Don't get agitated. We'll make you calm down. Is that the only thing that matters? Is tranquility worth the price of not living? March 3rd. Alert. Correct attitude. Replies when questioned. The nurses report that the patient is calm. She washes and looks after herself. She affirms the existence of a certain Amara. She says that Amara is a patient who disappeared when she was moved to this ward. No confirmation. Probably a regressive hallucination. Evaluate transfer. Did I imagine Amara? That's not possible. She was there. I know she was there. I feel it. She must have left some traces of her presence. We did find that one note that said she died. We can try to find her medical records in the archive where their letters were filed. But maybe that was just a hallucination of Renee, or whoever we're playing as. But apparently it's not Renee. No, I, think I, keep losing. I think it is, but she doesn't realize she's Renee. Amara's last name. Amara B. Aged 32. Housewife. Mother of two daughters. Married to Mario B. So Amara does exist. Yet she had no children and wasn't married. But that photo, it's her. June 3rd, 1936. Admitted yesterday. Showing signs of improvement. June 8th. Cheerful, calm, and tranquil. Her behavior is good, and she's keeping herself clean and tidy. Discharged on June 10th. April 28th, 1937. Arrived accompanied by her husband in an anxious and nervous state. Has difficulty speaking, trembles. Discharged May 14th. March 8th, 1938. A few days before Renee was admitted, she told me that she too had been admitted only a short time previously. 
Arrived yesterday in a febrile state. Discharged March 14th. She didn't leave. Certainly not after a few days. No. June 22nd, 1939. Readmitted once more, the patient shows rapid improvement. Discharged July 2nd. August 1st, 1941. The latest of many admissions due to agitation. Discharged August 27th. She came and went. Stayed only for short periods. But I remember she was always with me. What's going on? March 4th, 1942. Back again, the same situation. March 8th. Compared to previous admissions, the patient seems depressed even after a few days, although her demeanor is calm and she is attentive. Discharged March 25th. April 2nd. The patient is distracted and apathetic. Her husband brought her here and said, She's not eating, doctor. She spends all her time sleeping. I'm so worried, doctor. You know her. You can help her. April 6th. Tuberculosis. Patient transferred to the Maragliano Pavilion and is in isolation. May 3rd, 1942. Death from tuberculosis at approximately 8.30 a.m. Is Amara dead? Poor dear friend. I wasn't even able to say goodbye to you. Enclosed is a manuscript written by the patient, probably in a state of delirium. I'm dying. I know it. I'm losing a lot of blood, bleeding internally, too. It's strange. Since I came back in here, I can't stop thinking about that little girl with her sad eyes, her desperation. I only saw her for a short time, it's true, but she remains in my heart. Will she still be here? I hope to God not. I hope she's better and her mother's taken her home. My memory There's a third is sound of her to my right ear. What's the point of this? Perhaps my memory is playing tricks on me. Things are not as I remember them. Still hear anything. As I see them. But she said she liked me. I just can't understand it. I just wanted to say Still goodbye to her now? for the last time. I never even said goodbye to her. Yeah, we got bigger problems. There's noises nearby. How would a soul survive in this hell? I saw one to feel things again. Pain, passion. Feel the damn tears rolling down my face to remember that I was alive. You can just walk out, walk away. Might be able to. It took me like some time to get through.
an achievement. Found somewhere to freshen up. supposed to go this way you think? Ah, that's probably no. No what? Um. So there's apparently a bunch of different chapters you can get, like they take different form, I guess. Oh wait, this is from the beginning of the game. I think. Yeah, and there's the uh, the sound. Okay. I think it depends on like those dialogue choices you pick. I don't really know how it breaks now. Yeah. Yeah, I can't. No, that's what's going I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I'm kind of just exploring at this point. I'm gonna go back down to the graveyard. I'm pretty sure what I have to do is down there. But I just don't really know what it is. I'm gonna go back down this way first though. Oh. 
I got an achievement for that too. Had a taste of Tuscany wine. I don't think so, but okay. There's also one for uh, working in the garden. And I don't know where the fuck the gardens would be besides those ones over there, so I don't know. <laughs> what? What garden I'm supposed to go to? Unless that's a garden over there. I'm not doing this for achievements though right now. I'm just kind of playing it and exploring. But I do like open world ish games where you can kind of just explore and do whatever. Oh. Yep, that, that's the achievement. <laughs> They used to work at the garden, apparently. This really reminds me of that Slender game, though. I can't remember the full name and who made it, but played it a lot. It's under the arrival, that's what it's called. It's like the walking around and the flashlight. Even some of the textures look similar. This is just uh, my personal viewpoint though. I don't... I don't know where I'm supposed to go. What I'm supposed to do. There's no objective or anything either. I can't be sure it's Amaris. Okay. These crosses are nameless. How will we ever know who is buried? Oh. There are no names here. Okay. Amara no longer exists. Maybe she never really existed. And I was already dead. Why go on living? Let's put an end to it. I want to leave a letter. I want to apologize for the suffering I have caused. I don't think this is the right way to go, but... That's what you want to do. The reception is in the entrance hall. There I'll find a pen and paper to write with. Okay. to pick yourself up and try not to make the same mistakes and improve.
I and you just continue on from here. A victim of rage and lust. The most obscene desires. Mama, don't come and fetch me. I beg you. I deserve to be in this place. It's my only chance. But I'm not brave enough to keep on living. Not like this. Not like this shame which wears me down every accursed day. On a separate note, I am very glad they gave me a flashlight. That swing? What the fuck? But how do I get back inside? I should I go to the gate like I did the first time, but it wasn't letting me. I'm just gonna go right in, I'm not gonna explore.
I can't turn around. Everything goes up. I don't have a flashlight either. What the fuck is going on? I have to look at these. Oh. Kind of helps us. If he's not here, I have good reason to be afraid. We learn so many things at school, and so we have to attend. How would we get on if we didn't? My schoolmates, when the lights. I went this way. I have a really good sense of direction for mazes. I still get lost because they're mazes, but you know, compared to average, I have a very good sense of direction. I just been playing so many games in my entire life. Is that a scream? Is that steam escaping? What the fuck is that? My baby Charlotte is so beautiful, and she's so good. But Renee isn't. I get the feeling I'm probably gonna have to see them all anyways, or there'll be a very obvious exit. So I can just walk around and find them all. Blackbird's eating my head. That's why it hurts so much. I do a lot of bad things. I don't tell anyone, but Mom knows just the same. Those background noises are fucking terrifying. Don Gino knows everything. He speaks to God and he tells him lots of things.
Like, I know there's nothing here. At least I'm pretty sure there's nothing here. Yeah, you're kind of always on edge. Same way in the asylum, too. Like, you never really know. You never actually feel safe and secured. There's been no combat or chase mechanics, so I'm not too worried. But still, you know, it kind of puts you on edge, which is a good when thing. Or it's supposed to. I never used to sleep. Poor mom. Mr. Onofa is so nice. I am bad because I'm not kind. Mom always has to work because it's so cold in winter. Mr. Onofa helps Mom. How would you manage if you didn't? Oh. When I was small, I never used to eat. Poor mother. I feel like I'm missing like just one somewhere. Well, there's obviously two, but like they're probably being this like the same vicinity. I'm pretty sure it's not on the top floor. Wait, I thought it was on the top floor. I guess not. It went this way. Well, I can't see anything. Oh. Well, I sure as fuck can't see anything. I can't go anywhere. Maybe, maybe I'm dead. I can't see any light. Maybe I am dead. I can't get up. What's going on? What's happening to me? There's no one here, but these noises. I can't keep my eyes open. Hello?
elevator. Recognize this place. Okay, I guess we're not looking at that. So I just didn't want to see, so we're not. I guess. Just the way out. Maybe. Okay. A movie reel? Nobody laughs in here. I mean, really laughs. Not those crazy fools who laugh because people say they're mad. I don't know why they laugh out loud. They say I'm mad too, but I never feel like laughing. People used to laugh at me, but they were right, you know? You can't always cry and people laugh when you're afraid, don't they? It happened to you, not to me. It's better that way. They do that to show they're lucky. You mustn't take offense because it's true. And deep down, it's just like pity. If you see what I mean. Then you think about your own situation, and you laugh, uh, because you feel lucky that everything's gonna get better, that it's all shit. It's all shit, this place. You're not trying to tell me it's not true, are you? An intelligent person, educated, not like me. And if I can see it's a load of shit, just imagine how much better you understand it. No, come on. No, 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 no. I feel fine here, you know? After all, I can do and say anything I want. Was I supposed to do that? Am I... Okay.
yawn. I don't feel that tired. Okay. Alright, I didn't see whatever happened at the end. I'm assuming it wasn't important, huh? I don't recognize where we are either. I don't think we've been in these parts before. Like, we're beyond the section off area. Hello, Rainy. Welcome back. August 28th, 1942. We hereby notify you of the death of Ada T, mother of Renee T, a patient in your institution. No known relative. Sincerely yours, Onofrio P. I have no one left in the world. Nobody at all. Solitude is very strange. It muffles everything, slows it down. It's an endless scream that makes no sound. A silent scream. I can't stop looking at myself. I will never leave this place. There is nobody up there for me. These walls have become my skin. And the wretched desperation within them is my soul without a voice. Here, nobody weeps anymore. I would love to feel life, desperation, anger. I've stopped dreaming, daydreaming, maybe even thinking. I promise you anger isn't all it's cut out I've to be. I've lived in a reality which has corroded me and has stripped me of everything. Even my ability to feel pain. Once again, not all cracked out to be. Bong? Okay. It's a really narrow staircase. Holy shit. Here's something.
May 5th, 1943. Renee's state of health is good. She is eating and speaking. Her spatial and temporal orientation is good. Therapy suspended. December 3rd. She calmly asks if she can leave the hospital. Evaluate patient for six months. May 2nd, 1944. Discharge denied, despite a favorable psychiatric opinion. The patient has no home or means of support. I, mean, I understand that, but if somebody is calm and collected, you can't force them to stay somewhere. Yeah, she's alone and doesn't really have any idea of how to live in the world, but... He's like, nah, fuck you, you get to stay here forever. Ah, I guess I have to go in here. May 4th. The reasons why discharge is impossible are explained, and this is how Renee learns of her mother's death two years after the fact. So fucked up. Do not tell someone that. May 5th. She tried to kill herself in the night by hanging herself with a sheet, saved by the nurses. Restrained to her bed, she once more tried to kill herself by suffocation. The decision has been taken to perform a transformatory body. What? It's in those times that was acceptable. No, you don't have to do that. No. 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 No.
10th of June, 1944. Operation successful. Patient tranquil and collaborative. Motor coordination capacity reduced, but she's improving. Transfer to the tranquil department in the care of Dr. B. 25th of October. Continues That's to talk birthday. about Amara and her doll, Charlotte. The disturbances of motor capacity show slight signs of improvement. Difficulty walking. Not capable of riding. And the nurses report that they have to help her dress, wash, and feed herself. In the summer of 1944, Renee was transferred back into my department. Aware of little, indifferent, hardly ever spoke. One day, she said, when I find the courage to look at myself in the mirror, I see a young face which is aged and looks at me full of fear. She is a woman now who has changed profoundly compared to the girl that I had under my care several years ago. Only the sadness of her gaze and her intelligence are unchanged. She's so young, just 23 years old, but is lacking all vitality. Perhaps her condition may improve, but probably not. Her life has been thrown away. And nobody did a thing to try to avoid this. That person looks like Alabina. Oh shit, that was cryotic! I... I didn't realize that was actually cryotic. 
I saw just like a generic calm voice. And the actor was channeling cryotic. Nope, that was actually cryotic. That's awesome. That was really good. I like that. I got a little frustrated at, you know, those uh, couple of puzzles, but, you know, I'm going to take the blame for that one, the darkness one, because she did say it. And y'all know I'm a fucking idiot. So, uh, that happened. Overall, that was pretty good. I do feel like they should give a little bit clearer sense of direction when they leave you in such an open environment, but you know, that's alright. I think that's part of the fun. The ambiance is really good. You never felt safe. Always on edge. The uh, background noises were great. I actually did like the uh, styling of this. I liked the art style. I liked how things rendered. I think it kind of added to the abandoned run down feel the asylum. And overall, I think that was really good. I would love to see more from these developers. That was about, what, three and a half hours? That wasn't so bad. If you can find this game for a reasonable price, I'd say grab it. I don't know what the actual retail... Let me look it up real quick. Fifteen bucks, apparently. You can't you can't get it for more or for less. It just depends where you buy it from. Fifteen seems to be about the average. I think that's worth the money. I just want to achieve on it. I think that's good. I would like to see more from this. What's this? My name is Renee. I was a shy girl, and I just wanted to be like the others. But that's not what happened. Megan Naz, thanks for the host. You guys are the best. Oh, legends. I think I'm about to end, though. This is good. This is really good. I'm thoroughly impressed with it. I got frustrated on one of the puzzles, but it was good. I, I can't say enough good things about it. 
I wasn't. Ha- <coughs> Sorry. Took to my water. I wouldn't hesitate to uh, play another game by the dev team. I don't know what this is we're watching right now, but the game itself looks fantastic. I like how it touched on real issues too. I can always appreciate when that's done and done well. It had some tough content. Personally, it doesn't bother me that much, but these are very real problems for some people. I gave like 20 disclaimers. But it's some tough stuff for people to watch. Let alone playing experience, you know, it's just... It can be heavy for a lot of people. project I'd agree with that yeah you can tell they put a lot into this and from what I seen it was only done by what a handful of people not including the other language voice actors yeah I don't know what the fuck we just watched but that's cool I definitely agree with that. See, I... I'm not sure... Okay, hold on. That's the word choices. Okay, that makes more sense now. I couldn't tell what those little symbols were and what the... What the dialogue options. I didn't understand that at first. Now it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, and there's achievements for unlocking different episodes and stuff, and I'm not going to do all that right now. But uh, I'll definitely come back to this again. I like this. I will be right back. I want to take a look, see if there's something else I want to play tonight.
yes, I have a lot of games that I want to get to play. But I don't think I'm going to do that tonight. I think I'm just going to end it for now. That's This stream has been close to four hours? Yes. It's been three and a half. And I streamed for a few hours earlier. So I think I'm at my quarter for today. So I think I'm going to be done for tonight. What's my command for that? What? And what the fuck's my command for that? Hold on, I need to... <laughs> I can't believe I forgot my own command for that. Oh, that's what it's goodbye. Then I'm just an idiot. That goddamn I I am a class A fuck up. <laughs> Never forget that. I tried four different times to get the command to pop. <laughs> Let's read some of the diary, because like, I don't want it really end yet, but I also don't want to play anything else. Nah, the stream's still going. I don't understand the Town of Light thing. I don't understand that whole reference. My name is Renee. They told me that I had to write this diary, but I don't feel like it. It's not true that I feel better when I write. Actually, it's worse. I was a shy girl, and I just wanted to be like the others. But that's not what happened. No. I did things that, when I think about them now, eventually brought me here. Everything started with that damned light. It happened for the first time when I was still a little girl. I was six or seven. I was walking outside school when suddenly the noise started to melt into an indistinct rumble. The light increased out of all proportion and everything lost its meaning. I could no longer recognize anything. Objects, people, words, not even myself. I felt fear. It's a physical sensation. It prevented me from moving from swallowing, from breathing. After God knows how long, everything went back to normal, but a new fear replaced the old one, different but terrible, of the light coming back. And it did come back. My memory of those years is hazy. Between the age of about seven and ten, my memories are disconnected, and I couldn't say how many times and how frequently the light used to come. My mother gave me a doll around that time. Charlotte. Thinking back to it makes me want to laugh. But at the beginning, I remembered that I was afraid of her. I thought she wanted to harm me, to kill me and take my place. But when the light came, she would stay beside me, and her presence. Did not disturb me. I was able to talk to her, and so she became my best friend. At least until I was in grade two, when everything changed. She didn't laugh at me, and if I had to say something to my mother, I asked her to say it. When things inside me turned bad, she was the only one I could turn to. Now all of this makes me blush, but Charlotte was a real friend to me. I knew that she was just a doll. I wasn't stupid, but at the same time, she was real, too. I, I don't know how to explain it. It's difficult. 
My mother would cuddle her and tell her things. I guess she was trying to communicate with me. But back then, I was too afraid to understand it. So you all know at the end of my playthroughs, I like to go do some of the extra stuff just to show it on stream. I, I'm hoping it's going to explain it, but I'm still kind of confused. Is the game taking place after the hospital was shut down and Renee left and came back? Or is that just essentially some sort of fever dream after she had her lobotomy? Is it an alternate reality? Is that not even Renee we're playing as in the game? I just... I'm kind of really confused. I'm hoping this sheds some light on it. I didn't tell anyone about the light. I knew that something terrible was happening to me. I thought that I would die, and the shame I felt was so deep that an uncontrollable restlessness took over me. I was afraid when other people were nearby. I saw fingers pointed at me, mouths laughing, condemning me. That's okay, Naz. I'm just kind of thinking out loud. I I'm trying to voice my thought process. I would sit down on the ground and curled up in the dark. I would repeat a word, any word, in continuation. This helped me not to think, not to lose myself. I would spend entire days like this, hoping that my mother would ignore me. Her compassionate words hurt me and terrorized me even more. And so I had to... Shout, and shout, and shout those words. After a few days, things got better, and little by little, I came out of my hiding place. But the fear was always there, under the surface, ready to strike me even harder. So, I'm thinking that... We do play as Renee in the game. I'm still not sure of the timeline or if it's real or not. However, I'm pretty damn sure that's Renee. And she has some sort of disassociation or alternate personality disorder. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist. But it's kind of the only thing that really makes sense. I remember a recurring dream from that time. I used to have plenty of nightmares. But this particular one was so real that, even today, I ask myself whether it could have possibly been just a dream. I was in bed, enveloped by the warmth of the blanket, in the dark, about to succumb to sleep, when I heard the bedroom door open. I turned to face the wall and did not have the courage to turn around. I only saw a shadow cast against the wall by the light filtering in through the door. Then I heard the door close again, and I thought that it might have been my mother who, before going to bed, used to peep in to see whether I was sleeping. However, there was no time to breathe a sigh of relief, for footsteps approached the bed, and I heard the sound of breathing close by. Fear paralyzed me from head to toe. The blankets were pulled back. I remember the chill of fresh air on my spine. Someone sat on the bed, and I trembled. Then the dream finished.
The light often came when I was at school, turning my fellow pupils into puppets that would terrorize me. To me, they appeared transformed, with the bloodied heads of animals stuck where their own heads should have been. I would curl up on the floor and would even wet myself. The teacher would try to console me and would smile at me, but her teeth and her eyes would terrify me even more. Things did change. I don't know why, perhaps during the second or third year of school. It was more or less in the same period that I became friends with Bruna. I remember the sensation of joy I experienced when I felt almost normal. The light isn't coming. The dreams have gone. And I have a real friend. One who speaks to me. I would repeat this to myself proudly while looking in the mirror, where I no longer saw an embarrassing reflection. It seemed to me that the world was a difficult place, but it was no longer impossible. Bruna. I did not understand what Bruna saw in me, especially as she was almost two years older than me. I would tell her this every now and then, and she would joke about it, saying, Nothing. I don't see anything in you, which is what I like about you. And then she would hug me. But one day, she was sad and pensive, and said to me, You and I are the same. Don't be fooled. You are reserved and honest, and I'm not. But that's the only difference between us. The only one. Then, she began to cry. I was struck by the perception in her words. But only today, after re-examining my past, do I understand what she meant. I no longer considered my body as something disgusting and ill, far from it. I began to look at myself, to caress myself, and smell my own skin. I began to explore and experiment, finding physical pleasure. My ideas were not very clear, and I never spoke to anyone about these things. Bruna, however, spoke about them. She boasted about her love stories and her young men. To my eyes, she was very lucky, always being wooed. By marvelous, generous, and kind boys. Thus, I fantasized about her adventures, pretending that I was the main protagonist. But how could I ever be like her? Occasionally, I recall that she had black and blue marks on her body, but I was so naive that I did not understand. I did not put two and two together. It was Don Gino who explained things to me a few years later. He told me about Bruna's father and brother, but I was already very ill. The light had returned, and that thing made me suffer even more. It was my world, and it was crumbling. When I spoke to Bruna about it, she turned her head away and was silent for a long time. Prince Charming doesn't exist, Renée. At least not for us. I was 14 years old. I didn't think it was possible for a boy to look at me and desire me. When he asked me if I wanted to go for a walk, I didn't say anything. I didn't even have the courage to look at him.
things improved for a number of years, then suddenly everything came crashing down. One evening I came home drunk, and the following morning a terrible crisis overcame me. All of a sudden, what had I done? I was terrified. I thought I'd lost my sight. The light burned my eyes from inside. The memories of the previous day emerged in bursts, images, flashes, which unleashed something monstrous inside me. Repetition of words was no longer sufficient. Now there was a voice in my head which repeated them louder than I did, and they were words of accusation and blame. So I covered my ears and shouted and hit my head against the wall and threw up. I remember the doctor, the wall filthy with blood and vomit. My mother wasn't looking at me. Bruna was crying but trying to hide it. Charlotte was beside me. I never told anyone what had happened. He came to visit me, but I refused to see him. I became agitated. I think he liked me, even though things turned out badly. In that period, I began to suffer from memory loss. The few things I learned didn't please me at all. He told me that I was looking for him. It was all my fault. Bruna told me that sometimes I got drunk. People in the village gossiped about me. Sometimes I was covered in black and blue marks. I didn't realize what was happening to me, what I was doing. I was no longer in control of my life. From my little corner. He felt accused, hurt. I chased him away. I insulted him. He was proud, handsome. He said things about me to other people, which he shouldn't have said. Mother caught me coming home drunk. She beat me and sent me to speak to Don Gino every day. He came back and tried to speak to me. I think he liked me. Sometimes I sent him packing and I started shouting at him. But other times I embraced him. I held him tight and loved him. But he couldn't bind himself to me. I was 16 and ill. I had no future. I didn't get out of bed for weeks. Then I did things I was ashamed of. I slept with men. The guilt tore at my soul. And the light came back to torture me. I invented stories to justify my actions. I couldn't bear my own weight. Mom found out about it. Her voice split my head. I pushed her away because I was afraid of dying, and I shouted to the whole world what was happening to me and that I didn't understand. The police arrived, and they carted me away. I remember the onlookers shaking their heads. They would be better off without me, cleansed of shame, with something to talk about for a while. That makes more sense. Well, I mean, I knew she had trauma going into it, which is how she got into the asylum in the first place, but that, that sheds a lot more light on it. Still confused about the actual events of the game, though. Well, that still doesn't make sense to me, but hey. That's just a theory. A Travis theory. Everybody, I'm done for the night. Thank you for the views, the falls, and the hosts. Uh, let's see if there's anyone online I should pass you guys off to. Yep, yep, I'm going to pass you off to the Shark Show.